Good afternoon. My name is Carl Whitney. I'm a lieutenant with the Garden Grove Police Department. I'm the public information officer. We're here today to do a press conference to talk about the heinous crimes that happened here in Garden Grove in Santa Ana yesterday afternoon. It took place between 4.09 p.m. and culminated with the arrest of the suspect at 6.27 p.m. So right now I want to introduce Tom, Chief Tom DeRay from the Garden Grove Police Department. Good afternoon. First and foremost, I want to express our deepest condolences to the families of the victims of yesterday's traumatic event. Last night, the communities of Garden Grove and Santa Ana were preyed upon by violent individual who had no remorse or care for the safety of anyone other than himself. As the violent acts continued, the Garden Grove Police Department deployed all personnel to the area. We activated elements of our SWAT team that specialize in the apprehension of dangerous and violent suspects. Undercover detectives located the suspect's vehicle in front of the 7-Eleven, which was located at Harbor and First Street in the city of Santa Ana. As the SWAT team and undercover investigators began to converge in the parking lot, the suspect exited the 7-Eleven armed with a handgun and a large knife. As officers began to give commands, the suspect quickly dropped the weapons and surrendered to officers. It is my belief that the Garden Grove police officers' response and apprehension of this individual saved the lives of many other community members. I would like to commend the Garden Grove Police Department for their quick thinking, coordination, and teamwork that unfolded during this chaotic event. It was nothing less than outstanding. Had the suspect continued his rampage, he could have injured or killed many other innocent people. In addition, I would like to thank our local and federal law enforcement partners for their support and assistance during this tragic event. They were quick to offer any resources that were needed by our department. This suspect is identified as Zachary Castaneda, who has been identified as a documented gang member. This person should have been in prison and not allowed to be in our community committing these violent acts. Based upon his prior arrest record, he is a violent individual who should have never been considered for early release based upon Assembly Bill 109. As a police chief, I implore our policymakers to reevaluate their policies on criminal justice. The pendulum has swung so far that it is increasingly difficult to keep our community safe from the rise in violent crime. California law enforcement agencies have been crippled by Assembly Bill 109, and offenders are not being held accountable for their crimes. Our community becomes vulnerable when these criminals are released back into society and are able to commit further acts of violence. Again, our thoughts and prayers are with the families of the victims of this violent act. Now, just to recap where we're at right now, I want to go over the timeline of what happened yesterday. Our first call to the police department happened at 4.09 p.m. in the afternoon. We received a call of a residential burglary that happened at 12612 Gentias in Garden Grove. This turned out to be our victims from our homicide that called to report the burglary. They arrived home, found their apartment had been broken into, but they had no suspect information. So the call went into a report holding queue until an officer could be dispatched to handle the report. As that call was holding, at 4.23 p.m., we received a call of an armed robbery in progress at a bakery located at 13040 Chapman Avenue in the city of Garden Grove. A male, later described as Mr. Castaneda, went into the business and he threatened the clerk with either a gun or a knife and took cash. The suspect fled that location and returned to his home at the apartment complex where the homicides took place on Ginches at 12612. We believe what happened was the two victims that had been victimized during the residential burglary confronted the suspect as he returned because they lived in adjacent apartments. An altercation occurred between our suspect and our two victims 
and our two victims were ultimately stabbed and succumbed to their injuries at the apartment complex. We received the call, arrived on scene, and found both victims down in front of the apartment. One on the balcony, one inside the apartment. One victim was transported to UCI Hospital, where he died from his injuries. After the homicide, we had the robbery happen, we had the homicide going on. We received a phone call back to our communication center at 5.39 p.m. about another armed robbery matching the same suspect description. This robbery occurred at the Cash and More business located at 12845 Chapman. Our suspect went into that business, threatened the clerk with a knife, and took cash and fled the scene. So now we have two robberies and we have the double homicide happening and it's draining our resources here in Garden Grove. At 6.06 .06 p.m., another armed robbery happened at Best One Insurance. This was a savage attack. I'm gonna release this video later on where it shows the victim, a 54-year-old employee inside the business, was doing her daily operations of her business, sitting at her desk, feeling safe inside of business. Nobody expects to go to an insurance company to be attacked and, and almost killed at the time. Our suspect walks into the business, confronts the female victim, and without provocation, he stabs her multiple times. I'll release this video after this press conference today. After that stabbing happened, there was a check cashing business in the back of the same insurance company. That female victim threw cash at the suspect. He took the cash and fled the business. After that attempted murder and robbery, we received another phone call at 6.09 p.m from a person reporting a stabbing that happened at the Chevron station, which is near Harbor and Banner in Garden Grove, just north of the 22 freeway. Our 44-year-old male Hispanic victim was pumping gas. Our suspect was also getting gas at the same location. Sometime during this altercation, our suspect produced two large machete knives, attacked our guy who was pumping gas into his truck, nearly severing his nose off and stabbing him in the back. Our suspect, at that time, after he attacked this guy savagely, returned to his vehicle, finished pumping gas, filled off his tank, and then he drove off southbound on Harbor Boulevard towards the city of Santa Ana. At this time, we're making radio announcements across the Orange County. We're asking for assistance from other agencies to be on the lookout for this suspect. Our undercover detectives who were here at the station suited up, put their vest on, and went out hunting for this individual. We had no indication where this guy was going to go, but our detectives were on spot and went looking for the suspect. A short time later, our detectives found our suspect vehicle at the 7-Eleven at Harbor and First Street in the city of Santa Ana. Within a minute of locating the vehicle, our suspect came out of the 7-Eleven store armed with a handgun and a large knife. Our detectives drew their weapons onto the suspect, ordered him to drop his weapons. He complied. He threw the gun down, threw the knife down, he was taken into custody. At that same time, Customers came out of the 7-Eleven store, said that the security guard inside had been stabbed and needed help. Our officers diverted into the store, started life-saving measures on this individual, started doing CPR, but unfortunately the security guard later died at the hospital. We learned that the security guard inside the business was followed by this suspect, was attacked from behind with a large knife, dropping the security guard to the floor. After he was stabbed numerous times, our suspect used his large knife and cut the weapon, guard, uh, the, the gun off the security guard's gun belt. That's the gun he walked out of the store with. If not for our undercover officers stopping this individual coming out armed with a handgun and knives, there would have been more lost life, loss of life in the city of Garden Grove or Santa Ana. After this, we learned that at the subway across the street from the 7-Eleven, we learned that there was another homicide where an innocent victim was attacked by the same suspect. So what we have right now, four needless homicides happened here in Garden Grove and Santa Ana. The flags behind me are at half staff. That's for the needless violence that's happening across the United States. This violence has to stop. And we're here in a collaborated effort together to try and stop this violence in Garden Grove. So our detectives, our officers, our city council, our lawmakers behind us are all together to stop this needless violence in Orange County. So we appreciate all the support from the community and we want to make sure this violence stops. What's going to happen from here on out, it's going to take another 48 to 72 hours for us to finish our investigation. We're collecting evidence at all the different crime scenes. There's eight different crime scenes. It's going to take time to process this evidence. 
Once we have our case put together, the Orange County District Attorney's Office is going to file charges on our suspect who's going to be arraigned tomorrow. At this point, we don't have any other victims. We have the four victims from the homicide, the robbery suspects, and we're still collecting evidence right now. We interviewed the suspect. He continued to fight our detectives through the night several times. He had to be tamed, he had to be hobble restrained. He remained violent with us through the night. He never told us why he did this. We know at three locations he robbed people for cash, so we don't know if the, the motive behind this was purely for robbery, but there was no indication that this was a hate crime. We just know this was a random act of violence, and the guy unleashed evil across our two counties, or our two cities. I don't know his exact release date. We're working on that timeline right now, but I know he has a violent past. He has a gang associations, and we're working on his uh, criminal history right now. Yes, thank you. David Valentin, Chief of Police, Santa Ana. Um, in terms of uh, the question on point, uh, we are looking into the full background of, of the suspect uh, that we have in custody uh, under the custody of Garden Grove Police Department. Um, he, the suspect does have a sibling who was uh, killed uh, in an incident uh, in Santa Ana. I, I know recently we were out at the complex to deal with a suspect over a child custody issue he was having with his ex-wife. Uh, there was some type of where he took the child under because uh, the child was under monitoring, monitoring visits and he left with the child so we went there to investigate that. As far as any other incidents involving the suspect I don't have that right now. As far as your question about uh, the table being taken from our victim's residence, there was a table that was taken and there was evidence that was recovered in our suspect's apartment linking him to the burglary. Uh, we know that one of our victims had a uh, sword or a knife collection that was stolen. We don't know at this point if those swords or knives were actually used in these attacks today or yesterday. As far as his uh, status of being under the influence of drugs, I'm not aware of that, but our forensics people do take blood and photographs and uh, they're going to look into that. These photos to my left are actual booking photos for a suspect. So. He's uh, been described as having numerous tattoos by different victims. As you can see in the photos, he has tattoos. His uh, clothing description that he had on was described by numerous victims. There's a video of him being taken to custody at the 7-Eleven store wearing the same clothing that was described at all our crime scenes. I don't have any indication that he was, but we do take blood from our suspect, and that will be determined through the crime lab. The Mercedes is registered to him and it's registered to that same apartment complex where the, the first two murders took place. So the security guard was working at the store for security purposes. He was inside, he was followed by our suspect. You can see in different videos as the security guard made his rounds in the store, the security guard was attacked by our suspect and after being attacked and taken down the ground and stabbed numerous times, he was disarmed. After that, he left the store where our detectives took him to custody in the parking lot. The two victims who died at the apartment complex were roommates. The 62-year-old uh, Caucasian male was the, uh, the leaser of the apartment, and the other male Hispanic that died at the scene, we had not identified him yet. He was a uh, renter at the same apartment. Well, from the robbery victims to our oldest victim, it goes from 25 all the way up to 64 years old. So we have different ages. To my right is a timeline of all the crimes and the ages of our victims at the different locations. If you couldn't hear you, he asked why, why he was originally released. Uh, I assume you're all aware uh, the, the, the status of the law in California is to continually pursue earlier and earlier release of people incarcerated and to continually deschedule serious crimes to more uh, minor offenses. And so, uh, you know, I think the struggle that you heard from the opening remarks you know, from the chief is it's, it's hard for a lot of us to understand how this could be possible. Uh, but but the pendulum has swung in California to the extent that uh, this person, uh, I, I think by most reasonable uh, standards, shouldn't have been released, but the status of the law was he, he was eligible. Chief? So he was convicted for possession of methamphetamine for sales while armed with an assault rifle. I know at one point the suspect's mother was living at the apartment. She had called us a while back asking how she could get rid of her son through the eviction process. That information was given to her. We have not reached out to the mother and uh, have not received any statements from her concerning this investigation. The male victim at the gas station is a 44-year-old male Hispanic. He's undergone some surgeries, trying to reattach his nose to his face. 
but he's expected to survive. The female victim of the video I'll release later on, she's gone through some surgeries. I was told at one point when he stabbed the victim, the knife nearly missed her heart. So she's going to be in the hospital for some time till she recuperates from her injuries. But she is going to survive. Are they both Orange County residents? They both are Orange County residents, yes. The witnesses we talked to said there was nothing the suspect was saying to our victims. He just savagely attacked these people. And so for some reason, it was totally unprovoked. The uh, subway incident, the guy was stabbed. He was not an employee. He was a customer that was stabbed there. And that investigation is being conducted by San NPD, but there was nothing that was said that we've learned from that. I, I know at one point talking to our detectives, our suspect was covered in blood from these different crimes. And at one point he told one of our investigators that that was not blood, it was tomato juice that he had on him. So again, the suspect remained violent with us. He struggled with our officers being taken into custody. Back here at the police department, he continued to struggle with our officers. At one point, he was handcuffed. He slipped his handcuffs and put them to the front. So he remained combative the entire time he was here. So the video of the attack, I'm, gonna, I'm still editing it. I'm trying to blur out our victim to protect her. But I still want to show how savagely uh, this attack was.